Taco Bell. Find out. So then, uh, lucky you, you're not gonna have any failures. <laughs> you got an analog system. Thank you very much. <laughs> this guy actually came out from last month's um, webcam KL, where somebody had a presentation about public speaking. So I picked up on that and I thought about the fact that we all tend to be afraid of speaking in public. Why? Because we are standing in front of a bunch of strangers. Some of you are strangers to me, some of you are friends, some of you are professional acquaintances. The way I think about it, it's not so much about speaking to the public, because it's, to some extent, I will appreciate the opportunity to meet each and every one of you, probably not tonight, at some point, at some point in the future rather, but think about it as sharing with friends. What I found interesting tonight was the way Ian did his presentation. It's very informal, very casual. It's like you're speaking with friends. I'm sure he knows quite a lot of the people here, so he felt comfortable speaking with everyone here. Um, so you'll see that once you think about your audience, as being your friends rather than a bunch of strangers, you've got to look professional, you've got to be very, very confident about what you're talking about, which is necessary, by the way. But if you take a different approach, you take an attitude whereby you're sharing, you're not presenting, you're sharing your insights, your wisdom, hopefully you have some, and therefore that makes it more meaningful to people, essentially. Am I supposed to dance to the music for that? <laughs> you will never see that in a public presentation anywhere at uh, Tutra I can tell you that. So my background is in Malaysia, is, and I've actually got a, quite a geeky background, essentially. Okay? And what I'm sharing with you today is primarily self-learning, my experience in, first of all, watching people present, learning from them. Um, does anyone know what my t-shirt says, by the way? It was mentioned just now, referenced by Nathan and Ray. Anyone knows physics? No. Math? <laughs> That's hard when you need him. Energy, imaginary numbers. He's watching a new stream. He's watching and uh, something to do with energy and... What's the abbreviation? The imagination... Energy powers the imagination or something. I something. I something. I something. Okay, it's actually MIT. E equals MC squared. You rearrange the equation E equals MC squared. That's what you get, right? <laughs> but anyway, right? The major number is I e equals MC squared. If you rearrange it, that's what you get, right? And this is natural gas law, thermodynamics. So actually, whoa! I actually got it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll resort to simpler terms. I have a Higgs boson to sell you. It's not quite where I had at this point, They're way above his head. But a lot of this that I'm sharing with you is actually my personal experience in presenting in different situations. Uh, I actually live in the US, by the way. Uh, I was born in JB, I grew up in JB, and last time I fell in Long Kang in JB. Um, but I grew up in the U excuse me, I grew up in JB and I went to study in the US and have had the opportunity to do a lot, quite a few presentations. A lot of the stuff I learned actually is very formal. You can wear a suit, wear a tie, and be very prepared. Not my style, essentially. So that's why I got out of IBM. Yeah. Scary place. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So you're sharing with friends. I try to keep it as simple as possible. <coughs> it's basically you sharing a message with your friends. What do you need to do to be able to convey a convincing message? a memorable message to your friends. Well, first of all, you gotta know the core, the context of the stuff that you're gonna be talking about, the message, right? You gotta know what your friends need, what they need from you, what are they trying to learn from you, essentially. Uh, that was actually not the case tonight to some extent because it was kind of open-ended, no agenda was presented, essentially. But if you're proactive, you should go out and talk to people. Years ago, I was at an IBM uh, conference presentation of standing way in the back in the dark, right? The speaker came in, walks in and asked one of his eight, who am I talking to? All he did was to walk in and regurgitate a presentation that he given many times. He did not personalize the presentation whatsoever, which I thought was kind of weak of him. To him, it's just a job. He didn't go on and ask people, you know, I'm so-and-so, I'm here to talk about this. Is there anything that I can learn from you at this point where I can make this more personal to you, essentially? So you gotta know the core of what you're talking about. You gotta know your stuff well. Kind of what Ian was talking about. He knows his martials. So he referenced that as, as, as a framework to talk about basically different things. Right? He talked about iteration. He talked about leadership. 
He talked about money, things that mattered to him, and he put it in a framework that made sense to him, essentially. So then the question is, you know your core, you know what your friends want, what they need, and then what's the message? You pare it down, what all the stuff you know, I mean, you know a million things, but your friends can only handle five or ten. So you pare it down, keep it nice and simple. So the kind of message that you have, you actually can break it out into two big buckets, essentially, keep, to keep it as simple as possible. They're trying to impress you. Something that's based upon emotion, emotional appeal, essentially. And then to inform you, your mind. I actually got the switch. Wow, did y'all notice that? Uh, we know, so I, I was thinking that this is like that, must be like that. Yeah. <laughs> wow, thank you. It, did anyone it notice is. other than him? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, I confused myself at this point. But, the point is this, when you're trying to impress somebody, you don't actually make an appeal to reason. You're visual. What I noticed about Ian's is lots of visuals. Really, right? And, and then when you come to inf information, his presentation had a lot of bullet points. <laughs> Two different kinds of presentation, essentially, right? You get a way to impress people, you know, leave an impression, visuals. His was primarily bullet points. So. Assuming that you know, you're know an informing person, you're trying to appeal to a person's intelligence. Then, emotion, visuals. Visuals are great, really. Right? Something that I don't see in a lot of presentations is to ask for feedback. Because that's an iteration. How do you know you're going to improve as a speaker unless you ask? And you want to make sure that your presentation is, you ask for the kind of feedback that says, is my presentation relevant? Right? Is that relevant? If I'm talking to a bunch of software developers and says, today's talk is gonna be about perfume. Unless you're a female programmer, you don't care. Do I need perfume in this talk? It has to be relevant, it has to be actionable, and it has to be memorable. Because what happens with a lot of presentations, you get overwhelmed with stuff. Lots of information you like. The guy's doing a data dump on you essentially. He's smart and I'm not. I have no idea what he's talking about. Okay? So keep it simple essentially. There are three, th three things on the left, two things in the middle, three things on the right. I'm trying to keep it as simple. You all might have seen this before, right? You know, Steve Jobs, he makes an impression and gives a presentation. Not a whole lot of numbers. <laughs> and on the right, Mr. Gates. <laughs> uh, bullet point number, wow, pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> have you ever seen Steve Jobs give any handouts as his presentations? No, no. why not? It's all about making an impression upon you so they go and buy the latest MacBook Air, the latest iPod Touch coming out later this year. Right? Gates, I'm smart and I'll let you know that I'm smart. <coughs> all these bullet points. For you guys who are visual designers at this point, try not to get too horrified, okay? <laughs> right? There's a different attitude, different approach. Jobs is trying to appeal to your emotion, right? Wow, this thing is sexy. When's the last time you've seen any presentation like this that you say is sexy? <laughs> right. Man, I want to have one of these gadgets. Well, actually, all of them have can afford it. And somehow connect them properly. So this is an appeal to your emotion. He's trying to impress you. He's not trying to inform. He's trying to impress upon you. You should go out tomorrow or go online to buy the stuff as soon as possible, by the way. Gates. Wow, I don't know about the color scheme, the brown color scheme, just doesn't get, get <laughs> I, I think I just don't get the color scheme whatsoever. <laughs> they need UI people, that's for sure. Right. So, let me sort of recap quickly. Speaking is the thing that people are worried about, scared about, because I'm out there talking in front of a bunch of people I don't know. Think about it, adopt the attitude that you're sharing with your friends. Some people you already know, some you will get to know. The three parts to it, right? You, the message you're trying to convey to your friends. So the three things you're going to know is core contact friends, what they need, the message. Two types of messages, impress or to inform. And you saw that to some extent today. Yeah? And yeah. hi or hi? Hi, hi. Thank you. As for feedback, I will be asking for feedback whether this is relevant, actionable, and memorable. Okay? Hopefully it will be, because this is where the presentation gets a bit colorful. How will you remember <coughs> your initials of YMF? <laughs> What's that last word? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I have to explain that to you? Hmm. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> you remember that. When you walk out of this, you remember that. Right? And then the CA, no. You know? Hopefully you remember that. And this is my way of trying to make it memorable. <laughs> Things you will say, hopefully, in the right type of company with your friends. You wouldn't say this in public. A presentation at Putrajaya, that's for sure. <laughs> Unless you're going to get in trouble. So it's, it's an attitude that uh, I adopt when I'm doing a presentation. I'm sharing with friends, essentially. Something that's straightforward and simple. The YMF, you message friends, OK? You know the core slash content slash call, which I did not put up there. But know what your friends need. Ask them. You know, go if you have time ahead of presentation, presentation, go out to random people and ask them, what are you here? What do you expect to learn? That sort of thing. You don't really see that very often, by the way. Actually, I did not do that today. <laughs> I was talking with various people. And the message, what kind of message do they expect? Ask them, just learn from them. Because then, then you tailor your message accordingly. Whether you're appealing to emotion or your intelligence, your mind or your heart. Right. Obviously, <coughs> this is not the time to ask for feedback because according to one Q&A should be at the end of the panel, which is fine. But I will ask for feedback. This is relevant to you when you do public speaking. Ask. Make friends. If, you, if you're actually comfortable enough doing, if you sort of make acquaintances ahead of time, ask about the person's permission. Can I use your name when I'm making this presentation? Make it personal. Make it more relevant to the people at hand. Because otherwise, it's just a power, a power PowerPoint slide that is Wow, great, pretty, so on and so forth about your life. It's not personal. Make it action, actionable. So when you walk out here, maybe you have something that you can think about, that you can actually put in action. Right? And memorable, as you can tell, it's not really memorable. Mm -hmm. What was the F4 again, by the way? I don't remember. <laughs> um, is there any way to launch a YouTube video quick on? Check it in yeah. well, we'll find out something else, won't we? Yeah. Wuhan, this is an early prototype, obviously. We want to see that last slide. Hey, it's for everyone. The, the, the one reason I didn't want to use the word public speaking, sometimes I misspeak, by the way. And I'm not going to misspeak, but I'll let this guy demonstrate his ability to misspeak, mispronounce to some extent. Yeah, it's been flattened. Sorry. It's been flattened? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, this is actually what happened. Uh, I'll, I'll sort of tell the story because we cannot pull out the video. <laughs> do you know uh, what it is called? Okay, okay. There was a TV announcer in the United States. Uh, actually, I believe it was ESPN. And he was talking about this athlete who was injured. And he says, you know, this guy <laughs> cannot perform as needed because of bulging dicks. <laughs> Dicks. He was trying the word disc, D I S C, not D A I C K. I have a problem sometimes with the word public speaking. I wonder what you, what, what do you think I can misspeak it as sometime? No way. Anyway, since we have talked a lot about you know, vulgarity, what men and women think about on a daily basis? I remember reading a quote years ago, like. You know, men think about sex every 17 seconds. I'm like, sense? What, what, when can you get any work done? Basically? <laughs> <laughs> but on the average, men think about it 19 times versus women 10 times, greatly two times. So every time I mention it, you're thinking about it, okay? <laughs> 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 so you probably exceeded the quota by now. Stay at night. <laughs> I cannot believe this person. One, one to 388. You know, how many hours a day are you awake? Man, this guy must be working in a job that requires him to think really hard. <laughs> Women, 1 to 140. Food! Guys, you know, okay, not too bad, lah. you know, McDonald's or something. What I found interesting was sleep. Okay? So the guys are very, you know, guys have very basic human needs, right? We think about this, we think about this, we think about this. Yeah! Who can think of all six or three? See, women think about football. <laughs> <laughs> I found this funny actually. I just thought like, I guess I better throw this in. Are you saying men think more than women? <laughs> no, it's what they think about. It's what they think about. Why do you think I had the word bulging dicks in the previous slide? <laughs> it's 
not what whether they think, it's what they think about. <laughs> see, they think quite a bit about food, they think a bit about sleep. They, see this part, what, you know what it misses out? Skincare products, fashion. <laughs> shoes. Uh, shoes. Uh, shoes. shoes. <laughs> Things of that sort, okay? So I said this was an inter interesting presentation for me, just because I, you know, it's my attitude towards public speaking. Share it with friends, right? And he decided to throw this in because he don't remember this part. <laughs> it's it's nothing to do with the presentation as such, but I had to do this anyway. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about two other projects I'm working on in Malaysia, specifically in Malaysia. Um, this is actually a pro bono project that I'm doing with another friend of mine, another MIT graduate. In fact, I'm sure you all have heard of the Khan Academy, right? Yeah. Many of you. Uh, just a quick sense. Uh, raise your hands if you've heard of that. Thank you. Right. A friend of mine and I are doing Khan Academy in BM. Last in Malaysia. Okay. We're doing it specifically to help. What has, obviously, you guys have a sense of what the Malaysian educational system is like, right? Especially the issue of you know, learning science and math and English versus other languages. So, this guy, uh, Suhaini, uh, is a friend of mine. Probably see him on Saturday, in fact. Uh, he was number one in Malaysia for math for a few years. Uh, undergraduate degree in mathematics from MIT. He's a coach for the Malaysian team for the International Math Olympiad. So he knows his stuff. So what we did basically is, we looked at the Khan Academy content specifically for math. He went through and says, this maps well to the Malaysian secondary school math curriculum, right? So we are gonna be providing for three, two Malaysian students world-class math content with BM subtitles, form one through form five math, Form four through form four through form five additional math things I've forgotten from many years ago, and hopefully uh, it's being translated by Taiwan Malaysians essentially. But we need more help. Hopefully you learn English as a side benefit. Because if the if the video is in English but the subtitles in Malay, hopefully you're able to associate English and Malay. Maybe specific to that subject of Malay. Excuse me for math, right? But at least you have some big beginning familiarity with those uh, math specific terms. So this is actually what we have done so far. Okay, you know, this is a, one of the Khan Academy video clips, it's in Malay. We have done some of it in Malay already, so it's actually in Malay. Right. So Aini and his team has actually uh, identified about four or five hundred Khan Academy math video clips that pertain specifically to the Malaysian math curriculum. Now we need people to help. To subtitle essentially. A lot of work. But it, each video clip is about 10 15 minutes. It takes about an hour or so to do one. Right? So we're looking for people to help out with that. We've, I think we translate maybe 30 or 40 at this point. So we're looking for people to help out with that to translate into Malay. So assuming that Sao Khan is talking in English, you read in Malay. You're beginning to associate <coughs> Malay terms with English terms. Improve your English at some point, we hope. A tacky guy in my web designs because I'm you know, pathetic essentially. So we're going to try to do it this way: form one math, form two math, form four, and all of that. So when you, so, so these are actually the topics, right? Let's see, where's my eyes? I don't know. <laughs> this is a test of your eyesight. <laughs> so you know these are the topics that you'll find. So when you click on it, it'll, it'll actually open up to the rele relevant video clip essentially. You know, like you can read the text essentially. So what we need help with at this point is designing the website, the translation, and subtitling. There's a technical issue that I'm trying to address at this point. I'm not sure how to do it. Because we're going back to this one, for some reason when I zoom, uh, zoom, uh, full screen it, the subtitles disappear. Cannot figure that one out. <sighs> Leave it alone. So if you're interested in helping out with this, just come up to me and ask me because we're looking for people to help out with the translation. Okay. <coughs> this one is a little trickier. Uh, this is actually about politics. Okay, how many of you have Twitter accounts? How many of you have more than a thousand followers? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Original content here. Okay, I actually have more than a thousand followers on Twitter. The question is how many accounts do I have? Any idea? <laughs> 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 huh? <laughs> 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 anyone has 
that know what the number 222 applies to in Malaysia for politics? <coughs> 222 parliamentary constituencies. I created 222 Facebook accounts, Twitter accounts corresponding to each of the parliamentary constituencies. Oh, yeah, it took me a long time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> What's the password? It's the same for all that, oh my god. So, you know, I, I, I got the election data, G12 data, and, you know, you click on it. This is the Twitter account. Three followers. Three times 222, 666. Some of them, even the zero tweets, they have 20, 30 followers. People are actually interested to see what the hell is going on here, right? So, <clears throat> It took me a long time to get the GPS coordinates first of all. <laughs> that was the fun part, followed by then creating 222 Twitter accounts, 222 Facebook accounts. Yes. Need help in doing the pop-up because I suck at this line. It has more that can be put in here, meaningful data. This is part of the things I do even though I'm living in the US. I mean, I'm still a Malaysian, by the way. I still hold a Malaysian passport even though I live in the US. Any help will be appreciated for the Khan Academy stuff, BM, number one, yeah. and number two for this. Because I need to flesh this out better, make it more meaningful. Like, for example, you know, votes cast and all that stuff. I need to make it prettier, that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah, as I said, it's one of those nights when I really had lots of things to do, but I decided to do it anyway. So I need help in redesigning a Google Map pop-up, make it, you know, Prettier, essentially redesign the Google layout, essentially make it uh, pretty. Oh, yes. yeah. We're doing Project I in Singapore. We're trying to complement what Project Glass is doing in Singapore. Uh, I've got a team of two people, computer science professor from uh, NUS, that's me. I look formal for a change, don't you think so? It's unusual. <laughs> people are shocked that I actually have a pair of pants and a tie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is uh, my co-founder, he is a computer science professor at NUS, uh, MIT, Stanford, Carnegie Mellon, and graduate master's PhD. PhD in computer science at NUS. So we are doing something called Project I, and we are going to be talking to, you know, sorry. this is the background for uh, Project Glass, to c Plus, right? You probably have seen the video, skydiving down, pretty cool stuff, pretty <coughs> cool stuff. But the thing is this. Uh, it focuses focuses on augmented actual reality. What you actually see out there, right? You, you know, this is kind of like laying on layer on top of what you see around there. But how about altered reality? What the hell is altered reality? To create the sea like experiences. So I saw the divided the world into sort of things, right? Actual reality, altered reality. The world of ideas and the world of imagination. Uh, Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, and Sony are doing something to augment authored reality via PlayStation. We're going to try to do it for the world of ideas. We're still working very, very early stages. We're probably going to take the lean startup approach. Ray, Nathan, I think still? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ray and Nathan actually had a conversation at NUS with this professor, Terence Sim, yesterday. We're definitely going to adopt the lean startup approach because, to some extent, we don't know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> 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 Truly. But I think it's just the it's just the idea that we're gonna try to do something that complements something as big as Project Glass. I think it's pretty cool and exciting. I love the stuff. I love to do things like that by the way. So this is what these guys are doing, right? I'll talk about you say the world. Okay? Real physical world. We're doing something, you know, focus on actual reality. This is the mind's eye of the reality. And all you say, world of ideas and imagination. I think that's pretty cool. You know, you think that's a big dream. Why not? Learn it from learn from this guy. You know, tackle big dreams, there's no competition. Who the hell is going to try to do something that, you know, it's not supposed to compete against project class, it's supposed to complement it. Maybe no one else is crazy enough to do it. Why not? I have fun doing things like that, by the way. We actually have the opportunity, thanks to Terence, my co-founder, the NUS professor, to talk to somebody at research at Google. It's one of his uh, friends or mentors. While doing a PhD at CMU, he's now a research at Google, and through him, we're probably going to talk to Google Ventures. As I said, I live in the US, so it's easy for me to go back and forth. So this is the project I'm working on that I think is really cool, really fun, because it's crazy. It's implausibly crazy, but that's why I do things like that. Hope it's memorable.